lot of misconceptions of what this meeting is about, okay? This meeting is not about cutting librarians. This meeting is not about cutting guidance counselors. I want to know, as did the other board members, what does a librarian do? How busy our libraries are? What do our guidance counselors do that they may not, that they may not or should not be doing and should be assigned elsewhere? And so we have an idea. I'm not here to, to let, have people stand. And again, I apologize, but we have two hours. I don't need to hear about how important librarians are or how important the guidance counselors are. Believe me, I have two children still in school. I know how important they are. We want to understand what they do because the jobs have changed and morphed over the years, and that's what we're trying to understand as a board so that we understand. The information that we are cutting to librarians is false, okay? There is one librarian not being replaced if APC is closed, which we haven't voted on yet, and she's retired, and there's another librarian in the curtailment that was gonna go to f half time if and when the board votes on that, which we haven't even voted on till the end of June, okay? So anybody that was informed that we were talking about removing librarians, closing the libraries, or anything along those lines was misinformed. Anybody that was here at the last curriculum and instruction committee meeting will verify that, that we, this, we were looking for gather information and information only, okay? I, I, I don't want to cut you short. You know, I, don't, I know you guys come out, so maybe you'll benefit by this also. There are a number of things that in my mind and in the board's mind that librarians should not be doing and may be doing. There are a number of things that guidance counselors are doing that they should not may or may not or should not be doing. And if that's so, then we need to know about that too. Past practices doesn't make it right. And that's what we're trying to get to. Okay? That being said, we have two things on the agenda. One of them is the guidance presentation. We asked the APC, AIC, AIC excuse me, guidance counselor to give a presentation on what typically she does, and we asked the, uh, um, the district uh, for a presentation on the district and discussion on what the district libraries are doing and what they should be do uh, what they should or should not be doing, how they should be open more or not open or whatever. That's what we're trying to get to, okay? So we're gonna start with the, the uh, and think, the, and think with the, mm -hmm. uh, the guidance presentation. Um, Bad enough, we're over here, right? <laughs> I want to, basically, I just put a slideshow together to tell everybody what we do, because um, that's what we were asked last time, um, how often we do it, and um, the different duties and responsibilities um, that we do on a daily to weekly to monthly basis. Um, so I'll get started. If you have any questions, please ask. And the one thing I would ask, though, if anything shows up on this that that is not typically a guidance counselor's duties, if you could let us know uh, or let me know. I mean, again, I'm, I'm not sure if, if you've got anything on here that don't typically fall under the job description of a guidance counselor, but I would like to know that. Um, I'm going to be completely honest, this yeah. being my first year, uh, that's you, hard for me to do Okay. <laughs> because I'm not quite sure, and I know in our job description it says a lot of um, at all, the principal's discretion. All other jobs are signed, I know. So okay. um, that will be tough for me, okay. but I will try. <laughs> Um, so basically, this is our mission. We oversee and coordinate services to promote the success and growth, growth in students academically, personally, socially, um, as well as educate them in the field of careers. Uh, we take on the responsibility of promoting a warm, positive school atmosphere to maintain the overall well-being of the school. I like to think of ourselves as the moms and dads of the school. Um, you know, when, when things go awry, we're sort of there to try to even it out. Um, we do a couple different types of counseling services, one being individual, the other one being small group topics, uh, or small group. So some of the topics that we touch on are anger management and coping skills, anxiety and stress management. Um, I'll 
say the anxiety piece was probably the beginning of the year more so uh, due to transitioning different schools, um, coming off of the summer and getting back into a schedule. Uh, that lasted probably up, a, up until maybe the middle of the year um, that that was uh, a pretty big deal in the office. Um, transitioning skills, grief support, impulse control and decision making, those, that one is all throughout the year so far. Um, we work on goal setting, self-esteem and assertiveness and leadership skills, social skills, friendship skills. That one also um, comes in waves throughout the year because it seems like the seasons tend to affect that more due to being inside, outside, stuck together a lot, um, and just changing roles. Uh, bullying and peer relationships, constant one also. Different and changing families. Behavior management, that's a huge piece between check-ins and end-of-the-day meetings um, with a lot of students and anything that might come up um, with our emotional students. And then um, ownership, responsibility, and acceptance. That's one that I like to really promote because I feel that uh, that's important for students to grow and learn um, and, and be more independent so that I don't have to be there. Not that I'm trying to put myself out of a job, but I think that's a really big one to make them um, successful. Reward groups. Uh, that one's usually paired with behavior management, and then academic improvement and grade management. Uh, that one I tended to do up until maybe closer to the third trimester. Um, to break it down into individual counseling and small group counseling so that you get a better picture of what each type of group or counseling service looks like, um, individual, individual counseling, I usually see about five to seven students a day, and it can range any one of those. Um, some are scheduled, some are, they pop in because they had something happen to them at home or during the day. Um, that's not including the guidance lessons. Uh, the sessions, they typically range anywhere from 15 minutes to 45 minutes depending on the severity. They obviously can go longer or shorter than that, but that's the, the average. Uh, they typically take up to one and a half to two hours per day doing just individual counseling itself and check-ins, reward groups, um, our small group counseling, I typically do one to two groups per day, and that can range anywhere from three students to six students. Um, once again, a lot of the coping skills, anger management, peer relationships, um, they are normally over the lunch period, so that's about 30 minutes. Sometimes we'll go a little bit over into 45, um, and that can take up to 45 minutes if I do one group all the way up to an hour and a half. So. Um, that's what the services look like in a day, just working counseling. As a principal, these things run all year long and are very imperative to um, the thriving of the students throughout the school year because those kids that are picked are very needy and in need of that small group instruction. Sorry to interrupt. No, that's fine. And, and I have to go off of that. Um, you know, mental health is huge right now, mm -hmm. and I know that we we can pick out those students that we go, they're the scary ones. You know, those are the ones that we want to be doing preventative counseling on and get our hands on them as soon as possible. Right. Um, you know, I don't want to have to react to things that are going on, but that does happen too. The guidance lessons, um, the topics that we try to touch on are learning styles, study techniques, peer relationships, diversity and acceptance, the peer relation, uh, or I said that one, and bullying, um, interpersonal and intrapersonal skills, conflict resolution strategies, career education, and personal safety. Those are all ones that I, I try to touch on throughout the, the hour-long lesson. Um, and I try to do two lessons per semester for each grade level. Now, you actually go in the classroom? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Well, see, again, that's something that I don't think any board member knows. Yeah. Okay. Teachers typically stay. They do remain in the classroom. It's not um, additional time for prep or anything, uh, but it is a, a, a push-in program. And, you know, that's part of our preventative piece. Mm -hmm. um, that does take us out of the office, but it's very important. Student council. Um, this is also where I get to interact with the students and the particular population that I work with on our student council. Um, I take three representatives from each homeroom, and they are from fifth grade, so that right now I have 18 all together, um, and they break up into four officers, and then we have four committees that help serve the school. We meet one time a week for an hour, um, and that's during their lunch and recess, and then whenever I need them, um, they'll be doing tours this week, 
they'll be doing. Uh, they help with bingo during the year um, when we have different rewards for the kids. Um, they assist in maintaining a warm, exciting learning environment, and they are our role models for the school. Um, they also assist with the school tours, school activities, morning announcements, managing school service projects, spirit days, diversity activities, providing feedback um, to the district food committee, and then encouraging the school rules. Uh, so I do find them an important piece because a lot of the times the students don't want to hear an adult tell them all the time. Um, so it's important to have that piece. We also do attendance management. Uh, we take a look at the, the students who are maybe having truancy issues, having trouble getting to school, and most of the time it's because their basic needs aren't being met. Um, we try to figure out why that's the case and then if we can implement any services in there. Um, I work closely with the principal to identify those students and then we create any, some kind of tracking and reward system for them um, and we consult with outside resources and agencies such as SAM, Children Youth Services. Um, I've worked with Donna Capriotti with quite a few students and um, trying to provide wraparound services where needed. So the parents are involved, teachers are involved when needed, nurse is involved when it comes down to basic needs and um, the administration to provide students and families with the resources and services. Um, that one we probably have for our 431 students in the intermediate center. We have about probably five students that um, we are really focusing on right now, which doesn't sound like a lot, but it takes up a lot of time to contact all of those different people to make sure we're setting up the things that um, they need. Anywhere from getting them toothbrushes from the nurse to having counseling sessions to trying to get a hold of parents that are really tough to reach out to because they don't have enough money to keep their cell phone on or they are working all the time because they're a single parent. Um, diversity activities, this is something that I believe is fairly new to the counseling department. Uh, Mrs. Massaro has asked me to take this on and I work closely with our student council to do these things because it has become um, something that has been enforced or brought to the attention by the district as being important. And, um, you know, I agree. It helps to create more of an understanding between the students and also the faculty. So I have created and orchestrated monthly activities for students, staff, and family members to learn and educate each other about the diversity of our particular building. Um, our areas of focus were ethnicity, culture, disabilities, gender, and illnesses. Uh, the activities that we did were poster contests, door decorating. Um, we broadcasted diversity facts over the morning announcements. Um, through the TV, and we had done something um, with autism awareness during April where they would post on a puzzle piece how they um, feel about being unique. And then <laughs> coming up, um, I, we have parents that are going to be coming in to share information over WAIC about um, their particular heritage. So we've really tried to push this this, this year um, to promote acceptance. Once again, that's to help with the, the positive, warm atmosphere of the building. Um, guidance support. This one takes up quite a few, or quite a bit of our time, dealing with parents um, and anybody else trying to make sure we're consulting with the correct people. Uh, so parents, the way we interact with them is typically we are the first person to meet with them, especially if they are irate or elevated, um, because we're more of a neutral party. At least that's how we're seen, so we try to calm them down. Um, and get them to a point where they can see both sides and be able to, to talk it out. Um, the principal will often incorporate counselor me into the discussions regarding concerns to help provide a new perspective so it doesn't seem like it's coming from the administrative um, discipline piece. Um, I am also more aware of the child's overall well-being between social, personal, academic, um, so I have my hands on a little bit more uh, of the student's um, status, so that's why the, the parents will often reach out to me as well. Um, I provide the parents with resources between books, pamphlets, contact information to help get them um, the needs, their needs met and the services um, that are appropriate for them. I communicate to the parent, with the parents face-to-face, -face, on the phone or email, um, to help create those plans and agreements so that we can support and promote the progress of the child. And I can spend one to two hours a day communicating with parents between sending emails, calling them, um, checking up, 
reporting scores, um, anything that they reach out for me, to me, for I, I make sure I get back to them mm -hmm. as soon as possible. Um, also with staff, it's the same way. We consult with the um, teachers, the nurse, the principals, school psychologists. I work very closely with her um, about the whole home school peer development, uh, interpersonal skills. Um, the staff and I collaborate to develop the accommodations, tracking systems, data collection techniques, reward systems, and anything to modify the plans to help um, and be successful. We also work to promote the school-wide programs, such as the diversity activities. Um, usually the first person after the main teacher to be involved with helping students who are in crisis mode. Um, part of that's because I'm safety care trained, but also it's to use those verbal skills that I have that I've been taught to um, keep them from fleeing the building or punching somebody um, or becoming aggressive just to keep them calm and get them to a place where, where we can work with them. Um, when the principal is unavailable, the counselor is involved to help make decisions and manage situations that arise during the day, typically small discipline issues um, and small behavior issues that anywhere from a, a child just being disrespectful, talking to them about their choices, and um, being able to get information that I can pass it on to the principal when she returns. Um, also, attending periodic team meetings and parent-teacher conferences to support the teachers, parents, and students. We all know what parent-teacher conferences are. I'm constantly going from room to room to, to meet with a parent um, during those nights. And team meetings, more so in the beginning of the year, I try to get there at least once a month um, to sit in on those meetings to figure out what's going on. Uh, once again, I spend about an hour a day communicating with staff uh, any of the those people listed up there, principal, teachers, psychologists, nurse, uh, support aides, I also work closely with them. I'm the school liaison, which means I'm the person that is the link between outside resources and or parents and the school personnel. So children who use services, foster agencies placement, um, service access management for mental health needs, truancy and crisis, the wraparound service piece, um, I have a lot of information on that to distribute. Council on Chemical Abuse, we are lucky enough that they um, come in and they do more of the guidance lessons, so that was a way for us to supplement um, something else so that I would have more time to be out working with the kids and get my other duties done. Um, and that person touched on decision making, peer relationships, goal setting, uh, effects of drug and alcohol, and so on. Kids Peace is another big one that we've been working with. Uh, crisis response flight team, that's throughout the county any kind of grief supports and hospitals and rehabilitation services. Any questions? <laughs> I feel like I'm doing a lot of talking. Um, this is an important one, the child study and child find. This is basically to weed out the students who might need that extra support service. Um, they're the students that might be in need of an IEP and those further services academically or behaviorally. Um, so I collaborate with the principal, the teachers, and the school psychologists regarding students with possible further academic needs and or behavioral concerns. Um, we create a plan. We implement different accommodations and strategies to see if we can manage that on our own or is that a student that we go above and beyond trying to work with in order to get them um, to be successful in learning at the rate or close to the rate of their peers. Um, so we, I distribute the paperwork. I'm the one who collects the paperwork. I keep track of it. I also uh, do the schedules and facilitate the child study meetings with the teachers. And those meetings occur once a month for each grade level. Um, so since it's a three through five building, that's three meetings per month. Um, the child fine is on the other end. That is for the students who may have the gifted ability. We look at their COGET scores that they get in second grade and uh, we have a matrix that we follow that the school psychologist um, found was appropriate and then we look at the different um, candidates that meet those the criteria for possible further testing <coughs> or if they're in there somewhere um, may not exactly qualify for the gifted program or we can provide them that enrichment um, service and that the child's the child fine is at the beginning of the year when we receive their COGET scores. Um, that's a lot of trying to get them 
up and going as soon as possible. Um, special education, my part I have in that is I'm an LEA uh, for the gifted and speech IEP meetings. That's what I've been assigned by my building principal. Um, if she's not available, I do go to the ones that uh, she is not available to go to, and that's more the learning support, emotional support, and the life skills meetings. We sort of split them up into the two. You said your building principal assigned you as the LEA. Is that typical that all guidance counselors are LEAs? It all depends on how um, they can. They may be an LEA. It is not typical in every building. When Mrs. Weber and I worked together, she would go to um, the first IEP meeting for gifted students because she wanted to be aware of what was going on, but it wasn't something that I ever assigned. Many times there would have been both. Well, I'm, I'm hearing several jobs being assigned by the mm -hmm. principal, and I'm trying to decide whether, I'm trying to determine as to whether or not it's done in Birdsboro that way or if it's done in Monocacy that way because one of the things we want to do in the district, obviously, is transparency right. through the, the building. I would have to say that on an occasion where you have multiple meetings going on in the, in the building, it's difficult to be at all of them. Mm -hmm. So that would be where they would most likely be participating. And I'm getting nods from the okay. other two guys. Yeah, I just want to make sure. Yeah. I mean, when you say... When but you assigned is a little bit strong. I would not say that I've ever assigned, and I don't think either of the other two guidance counselors would say they've been assigned, but... It's just something that they do as okay. part of the team. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, I attend about three to five IEP meetings a month. Uh, I, there are more going on at the same time, mm -hmm. and typically at the beginning of the year to the middle of the year. Um, and that's a, a big reason why I was separated into the gifted and speech IEPs um, to help spread out the wealth. Um, the counselor is also in charge of the special education referral process. I get a lot of phone calls from... Um, the parents asking about the paperwork process, how does um, that come about, what does it look like, who's involved, um, how long does it take. I and That's been a process that's been in place prior to my ever even coming to Daniel mm -hmm. Boone as well. So Again, I, I don't, yeah. I, again, when, I, I, I don't have a problem. Again, yeah. when I keep hearing my principal, I wanted to make sure that all principals that were following the same process in every building. So if you're working as an LEA, then Birdsboro's guidance counselor and Monocacy's is doing the same thing. Otherwise, I sit back and say, okay, you're getting work piled on you that the others aren't getting. And that that's more what, we, again, we, we, we've gone to the process where, you know, in kindergarten, kindergarten, I mean, it's something that in 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 each building it's being taught the same way. First grade things should be theoretically taught the same way with the same materials, the mm -hmm. same handouts. I just want to make sure that the guidance program is, is being done the same way. So that, 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 was, that was the only reason I had that question. And I kind of get caught up in it because this is, you know, my building, but right. I've collected information from um, Sandy and Kate from, and Celine, and it's the same way okay. in their building as well. So I apologize that that wasn't. Um, so once again, I initiate the paperwork, I type it all up, I give it out to the appropriate people, mm -hmm. and then I'm in charge of making sure that it's back by a certain time and sent out to the appropriate departments um, and in, in a timely manner so that we're not running over and pushing those timelines um, and having legal issues. So paperwork in the beginning of the year has, it requires a large amount of time, um, an hour to a day in the beginning of the year. Towards the end, not so much. Um, and parent the middle of the year yeah, as well. I was going to say, parent-teacher conferences in mm -hmm. they February would a lot be a of, spike time. Yes, they sparked <laughs> a, lot of, a lot of referrals as well. Um, right now it's settling down. <laughs> I'm also the building coordinator for the 504 accommodation plans. So mm -hmm. these are the plans where students might not qualify for an IEP, but they do have... Um, a need that needs that needs to be met um, in another way by some other small accommodations. So I'm responsible for setting up that meeting. I'm responsible for communicating with the different teachers, the parents, um, the principal, and the 504 district coordinator. Um, I'm also responsible for drawing up the plan and um, making sure that I'm communicating when a plan is complete to the district coordinator. Uh, a lot of the times this is another, it's 
very similar to the IEP process where we have to make sure we're updating them at the beginning of the year um, and having those meetings with, with the parents to make any changes if necessary. Testing, this is big right now. <coughs> Thankfully it just um, successfully was completed, but this took up a good three to four months to um, complete and orchestrate. So I am in charge of preparing, um, doing the meetings and trainings with the staff, organizing all of the booklets, um, making sure that, that they're accounted for, um, coming up with a schedule that suits all of the specials, all of the teachers, um, and the testing process, and then um, distributing them in the morning and administering any PSSAs to students who were absent or who needed um, to do the makeup or the extended time. So um, I also had to attend trainings on how to do the PSSAs as far as administering them and the regulations and standards um, regarding the testing process. I also um, did some training mainly for the aides because um, Mrs. Torsha helped out with the, the main building one, uh, the main building meeting, and to, those were to discuss the process, security, and the testing schedule. Um, and any accommodations that were appropriate and allowed. Uh, the counselor is also responsible for creating the testing schedule, um, test accountability, monitoring students that need extended time, and makeup sessions. Um, like I said, it took three to four months to orchestrate that entire thing, um, from the beginning with the trainings all the way to the end with collecting and giving it back to the building or the uh, district coordinator. Are you, and maybe Mrs. Torshi can answer this, with the keystones coming in, the PSSA is going out the door? That's um, only at the high school. Understand, at the yeah. high school, okay. So they, the, the PSSAs are still going to be used at the, at the lower levels. Yes, and middle school is getting bombarded twice. They get Algebra 1 keystones right after the children take reading um, and math and science in 8th grade. So we have 92 8th graders that are being tested again after this um, okay. Okay. testing. So they, the guidance counselors are very in, integral in the whole process. Um, any kind of other testing that we do, we do math placement tests for students who are new to our district. Um, we also do the math placement testing. Uh, we collect it and give it to whoever um, needs to get it for the transition into middle school. Um, and we, uh, I, will, I will end up working this year with the basic skills teacher to learn the whole process of um, how he sorts and places students based on the, the math end of the year test. Um, foresights, I, did, uh, I didn't do anything with the administration of that. Um, that was basically the teachers and our basic skills um, teacher. And, but I did do all of the scanning of the tests um, and that took hours. And can I ask, Anne, did you find that that was a similar um, responsibility in the other elementaries that were giving foresight? Um, I know it is a middle school right. responsibility, but, but not at the, the elementary school counselors oh. have to scan the I, I don't scan, scan the test. There's only, I think, one person, maybe two, in the building training. You had to have a training on that using the Scantron and I didn't receive it, so that's not a responsibility that falls in my place. Um, there was also a lot of trouble, and I, you know, the, the rumor is that foresights might not be around next mm -hmm. year. However, um, no. there, I don't believe. I know we don't do them at the high school anymore. No. So. Yeah. I don't believe there was appropriate training on how to use the program as far as retrieving data and results. So I took it upon myself to <coughs> go ahead and contact um, um, the foresights. Well, to give you just a little bit of insight, the reason that we elected, meaning. The committee elected to go to the board and say no, is it didn't take a lot for the kids to memorize the questions and very quickly understand that three scoops of ice cream costs you a dollar, therefore it's 33 cents a scoop. I mean, it didn't take a lot for the kids to get that. And year after year after year, they you know they they, they became useless. Yeah. One time was probably a very beneficial test, but as they repeat them time in and time and again, it 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 was not irrelevant. So. Um, the gifted screening test, the K, we use the KBIT too, and I administer that, score that, and relay the results to parents, students, and psychologists 
Um, those come up periodically. I probably did about 10 all year, and they take 30 to 45 minutes. They're not timed. Um, but it does take a little bit to score them mm -hmm. and uh, make sure I'm communicating the scores back to the parents and whoever needs to be aware of them. Class placement and scheduling, this is coming up. Um, I distribute and manage the class placement cards. I worked with, or I will be working with the principal to place the students in the appropriate classrooms based on their academic and social needs, as well as the teaching style um, for the classroom. The counselor will also work to help the principal with the scheduling for the following year. Um, and then both of those tasks are done at the end. Thankfully, I had um, Celine, the, she was able to create the uh, or I should say update the class placement cards this year, which I know took her um, a good month or so to make sure between the meetings and um, updating them, getting the information that is necessary. So she helped me out with that. Uh, the next one is trainings. Those, I mean, a lot of them are optional, but they are necessary. The counselor attends many trainings throughout the year to stay current on the new and upcoming trends. Um, counseling techniques, resources, and changes in academic standards. Um, you know, education is ever changing, so um, and so is mental health, um, and that's why it's important for us to be there. A lot of the trainings that I got to go to were through the Berks Area School Counselor Association, um, the in-service trainings, and the BCIU skill training between the County Crisis Flight Team, um, PSSA administration, and then the Safety Care Training. I think that's a lot of just being a first year counselor right. too. Other duties and responsibilities, these are the small things that pop up throughout the month um, or the week or day that we have to help out with and have a hand in. So classroom observations of students to help collect the data. Um, this could be part of the child find or the child study process, um, but also to help with the classroom management and learn the teaching styles for placement of the students in the following year. Um, occasionally I get to go on the morning announcements and that's working with the student council but that's also to promote any kind of skills that I feel necessary um, for our students to know and learn um, and to hear. So I also help with the beginning of, or I helped with the beginning of the year kindergarten bus rides um, for the primary center and I help orchestrate the fire intruder and severe weather drills, um, manage homebound students paperwork and meetings for the building. I occasionally substitute for a teacher or secretary when they are unavailable. So say we have a, a secretary who's out sick and we're down to one secretary and she needs to go to lunch. <coughs> it's a temporary thing where I'll sit in um, can get some paperwork done as I, as okay, I do. Okay, but you don't typically substitute for a secretary all day long? No. Okay, good. <coughs> okay. How about for a teacher? No. No, I've only, I've only had to substitute for a teacher one or two times um, because we were short on subs. And but you you have. I'm not a guy. Okay. Okay. Like, I have. Yeah. Okay. 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 Teachers you have. You have substituted for. Yeah. Got a teachers. I have. I'm a counselor at the middle school. I've been assigned. Yeah. The teachers been out as a teacher because I also have a teacher <coughs> serve, but I was asked to cover. It hasn't happened a lot, but a few times I've been asked to cover for a teacher all day. Okay. Uh. I update and disseminate child study cu child custody information um, to the appropriate people and update the system and I'm also in charge of keeping the student records. I identify and connect needy families to the support and charity organizations and resources that's typically around the holidays. Um, transitioning activities for students coming from primary center, that's the bus rides, um, that's also the tours that we do and the students who are going to the middle school um, my anxiety students, I contact the middle school counselor to make sure I set up any tours um, and meetings that are necessary to help with that transition. Um, I also consult with the school counselors and specialists from other buildings to um, keep an eye out for those needy students. Um, conduct tours for families that move into the district during the school year, as well as I will be doing that over the summer. Um, and I helped create the tour for students transitioning into the Intermediate Center. We got to do that a little bit today. Um, we'll be doing it Friday and next week. It was fun. So um, I got to collaborate with the cafeteria employees, the principal, and 
um, a supporting teacher who's helping. She's going for a principal cert, so I have to work with her on, on scheduling. Um, this is outside my, the intermediate center. Um, some of the other counselors that are, are here to speak for this um, at the elementary level, uh, a lot of it's not performed because we are a three through five building. So the kindergarten registration that is done at ninth in March, uh, three hours. Mm -hmm. I think it's about three hours on three different nights. Um, that's just the when the parents are able to come in and register. Okay. Not to mention the prep leading up to that. Also, the kindergarten bus ride tours are happening. One day is typically that we have them for a stretch of maybe three, four hours. Okay. Um, and then your general summer tours open to the whole, to all the grades uh, happen about three times throughout the summer, three hours a piece. Um, and that goes along with the summer kindergarten placement um, based on the busing schedule that the district will create. Um, she, at the, the K-2 building, they also get to work on the cognitive abilities tests um, that comes in second grade. The parent education workshops, um, I know that Mrs. Weber did them last year, but I didn't get to do them. I think Sam didn't do them. Right. Year. Okay. There wasn't anyone drawing um, And then uh, periodically ask to contact parents um, when lunch bal balance is outstanding, that's something that I didn't have to do this year, but I know other counselors are asked to do um, because they can work with those students, uh, the confidentiality piece. This is my last slide. It's basically the enrollment and what each building looks like. So the projected enrollment for 2013-2014. Um, the Amity Intermediate Center, our my building would if they would combine, would be approximately 725 students. Um, Birdsboro will be approximately 374 students, and that's the, the these are all projected with kindergarten moving in and with grade changes moving out. Yeah, I, I don't know if you, you, you probably haven't seen this, but I had the administration look at, because we always get what are the, you know, how, how do we rank with the other districts uh, in the county. And based on population, Ole has one counselor per 264 students. Conward Weiser, which is the lowest, mm -hmm. Conward Weiser has one counselor per 400 students. Uh, Boone sits at 371 students per counselor. So um, we're at the upper end of the, the, the student per counselor ratio. So. I Again, I mean, it's, it's, it's a number, and I mean, could we be at 600 students per counselor or should we be at 200 students per counselor? It's just an indication that, that we're, not, we're not at least heavy on counselors, let's put it that way. Because I mean, if we were sitting at the lower end of the scale, somebody could, you know, they could, the argument could be made, right. but we're at the upper end of that scale. So, um, so I mean... It just again, it's just it, it it's an it's just a number, but it's an indication. Sure. And again, you're making the assumption that APC is going to close. Sure. Uh, we legally can't make that assumption until the 13th. Sure. And, and I think that's kind of what we were going over is you know if if that is true, then how do we distribute the the jobs and, and uh, the responsibilities? Well, you right a, as of right now, the and it's no secret, the guidance counselor from APC, if it were to close, is, is, is right now scheduled to transition to AIC mm -hmm. in that role. Mm -hmm. So, um, and that's the only position I believe, because the librarian retired, but so yeah. Mm -hmm. So I mean, that, 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 that position was not removed. Right. Yeah. And that, I, I mean, 725 students, to put that in, to perspective, if that would be the case where it would turn into a K to five building and there was one counselor, I mean that's a sixty eight percent enrollment increase from this year, adding the K to two grade levels. That's a couple hundred students less than the entire Antietam school district. <laughs> um, so. Yes, and, and those those students that comprise the sixty eight percent, those are the the K to two children right. who have the basic needs where their social and emotional uh, needs require constant reinforcement and the support of, of um, 
a counselor sometimes mm -hmm. uh, so that they can develop successfully. Um, you know, if we would to, to, if one counselor were to have 725 students, it's going to be, that preventative piece is going to go out the window and it's going to be, um, we're going to play fireman. I, I don't think, and, and those that were at the last meeting, I don't think anybody suggested that you would, or, or somebody would have only had all 712. Sure. What we wanted to do, and, and, and Mr. Martino suggested it, is, you know, they call it a def desktop study. We call it a, you know, a, um, a, 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 use, a use analysis. I mean, again, we know what teachers do. I mean, but guidance counselors are there. You're silently doing your job in the background, and we don't hear about it unless... You know, one of our kids come home and tell us that the guidance counselor's picking on him or something, and then we, you know, we go talk to the guidance counselor. Um, so I wanted, as a board member and as the chair of the committee, to understand what the guidance counselors do. And I'll tell you quite honestly, you you do far more than I than I thought you did. Um, I'll also be honest. I think there's a few things you do. I'm not sure I would want a guidance counselor to do. There's other things guidance that you could do. I'm not sure I want you you. Uh, running the Scantron test for tests, that's not a job that I would uh, necessarily think a guidance counselor should be doing. Um, not insulting secretarial help, but that's that's more of a clerical job. Yeah. Um, you know, so um, you can go out and hire a temp to do that for a short period of time when you should be doing something else. So um, I would like to get a copy of your PowerPoint so that, uh, you know, we can we can look at that and, and, and determine at least administration. I know you took notes. Mm -hmm. I was watching your script. I can't read them because I have my glasses <laughs> on, but I know you you were taking notes. So um, there are a number of things, uh, you know, that um, I, I think that that could be reassigned to give you more access. You're going to get a lot of kids, and not to mention the the if APC closes that lower number to the the kindergartens and the first grade kids are going to need a lot of hand holding. Uh, you're away from mom and dad for the first time, and then you're there all day the second year. So there are going to be issues that need to be addressed there. So, um, you know, uh, again. Not to even, you know, discount the whole transition for those kindergartners coming into this much larger building at, that are going to be going into first grade. That oh, those we're, big yeah, fifth graders picking right, on them. That we're assuming they'd be in that, that smaller, you know, right. feeling secure environment. So that's that's crucial. Nice job, Pam. I do appreciate it. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Okay. okay. Again, if, if um, what I would ask you to do is, is from from an administrator standpoint, having been a building principal, look at what's there mm -hmm. and and look at what is clerical work that could be unloaded because uh, right we need to unload the clerical stuff. Uh, I shouldn't do anything with discipline. What are you trying to do? <laughs> Shut down? <laughs> oh, just pull it out. Everybody just, else you, does. Yeah, you can just. Everybody else yeah, pulls it, it out. It doesn't eject you. Yes, there you go. I did. Just say okay. Everybody does. Everybody pulls them out. <laughs> so, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and again, we're, we're going to have a. If you guys, those who have not used, I have a hard dead stop at 9 o'clock at the latest of my committee meetings, uh, especially because we normally have one or two teachers, and now we have a busload. You guys have stuff to do in the morning, and I don't necessarily want to have you here till 10, 11 o'clock at night like we do at board meetings. So um, that being said, uh, I'd like to, to transition into the library, the district library discussion. Um, and what I did was I did put out an email to the library and uh, the guidance counselors and um, even the school psychologists, and I, I did ask them that to, to send me information about what they do because um, in the event that I would have to speak or, or answer to, you know, any questions that you might have, I felt that I could only really speak to what Mrs. Wenzel has been doing on, in, in AIC, and even then I don't spend every minute with her, so... Um, above and beyond her checking in, you know, with the kids and, and, and doing all the fun things that she does, I know there was a lot more. So I did ask for input from everyone, and um, I, I did ask that if they, they could, you know, come to the meeting tonight, that I would greatly appreciate it, because then that way I'm not, 
misinterpreting what they shared with me. Um, I met with um, Robin for, for quite a, a while in my office prior to the meeting mm -hmm. to collect information um, from the middle and high school level because that is an area that I have not been in for quite a long time since um, leaving Antietam. <laughs> so um, I, would you like me to share or since they are here to just give them the, a synopsis of what's you know, being done at the elementary? And, and again, I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to train ignorance on this for the simple reason that and I'll probably age myself here that you know when I went to high school and, and I went to middle school we had a I still remember his name Mr. Moore that the only thing he did was to, as a librarian was to throw you out of the library <laughs> when you were talking and not behaving yourself um, they did very little teaching now I do know that my wife did teach as a librarian up at St. Catharines so I do know that she had a lesson plans and everything else. So I, I understand that aspect of it. Uh, so I know the lesson plan, the teaching of, um, you know, how to do research, the do you know, the whole, I got that part. Um, and I don't think that anybody uh, really doubts that part. What I'm looking for is um, above and beyond that portion of it um, for really seriously. I mean, again, what, what, what do you do as a, as a, as a librarian that we wouldn't think you do? Um, on a daily basis or a weekly basis, um, what are your libraries used for? Uh, we, we heard that there's computers in there that kids go in to use them to print their projects off on uh, because they may not have a printer at home to, to be able to print. Um, you know, I'm, I'm, we're, again, that's the first that several board members heard that as a function of the library. Um, you know, so again, so that that's what we're looking for. Uh, the research actually starts there. Linda, do you want to? You look like well, you were. Well, I was, and I don't know if what we do in the elementary is slightly different than what they do in the secondary because we are a class. Mm -hmm. They come for forty-five minutes, and they view us as a library teacher. Mm -hmm. You know, I am primarily a teacher. We do give grades. We do have a curriculum that is aligned with state standards. So that probably takes the bulk of our time. Okay. Um, with um, through it. the American Library Association sees that we have four uh, line, major functions. One is leadership, which we probably don't do as much as we could. Because access, yes, because yes. of scheduling. Right. But access is key, and this is providing equal access to print and non-print materials, not only physically giving them the material, but giving them the skills to access the information. Again, both print and non-print. So one of the lessons that I did with fifth grade, and I think this is very interesting, was we compared. We compared print and non-print resources on the same topic. So we first might have gotten a book on a bear and then looked at a website as a bear. What I think is very interesting is that this was fifth grade, and I said to the kids, okay, which one was easier for you to access? By far, it was books. It was on their reading level. It had larger print. It had a lot of white space. It had pictures. It had captions. It had an index. It was very much geared for them. But then if you ask them afterwards, well, where would you go to for information? They are so geared to hop on that computer, mm -hmm. even though it took them 45 minutes and they couldn't find a ding-dong thing. <laughs> they want to get on that computer which also worries me about, you know, we talk about these e-books, that's not equal access. The kids that have access, well, they also play games on them. But it is the print material where we can give to everybody. I can have 10,000 books in my library that each child that walks in that door has equal access to it. I don't know if you can say the same for e-books. Right now, aren't even investigating that right. stage. I still have uh, the DVDs. VHS. No. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we are so antiquated. But what, what is uh, one of the questions we had asked? And, and, and what is the circulation rate in the libraries? Are they going up? Are they going oh, down? Lord, are they static? Huge. And what is interesting is when I went to the middle school, those kids were able to take out a boatload of books. And I thought, oh, I'm only letting them take out two blocks. But all of a sudden, they go to the middle school. How are they going to be able to take care of eight books, nine books? March. So I said, you can increase how many. And that's the high school. And that's the middle school circulation. We were limiting the children because we wanted to get the books back. Mm -hmm. 
Oh, I don't. Hey, again, I'll tell you right now, who's in middle school? I got one of your books sitting in <laughs> in the uh, scout closet. Uh, I'm an assistant scout master, and the kid left it there, so it's now in the scout right. closet. So uh, if he's missing it, I'm not giving it back to him. Please, page and like fine, but I've got one of your books. And I'd like to say too, for the middle school, if you look at the circulation, you have to understand. Three years ago, I went part time, so the library started being closed a day and a half a week. Is this, is this I was there March? four mornings yeah. a week, all, all and they were rotating yeah. Um, Robin, what you gave me for circulation was that was through March. Was that correct? And so was that for all of the dates? Are they all year to date March, or they or year to date March this year, and all the rest of them are? are, are all the rest are a full year. Okay. That's why okay. I have yeah. the one up in. That's for everybody that's out that there. Three quarters. This is middle this school here. That that one is. Mm, this one's middle school. This one's high school. HS up there. That's a little surprising. Yes. Okay. Yeah. We're averaging about. 4,100 books a year. But you have to remember, middle school and high school are only also open. Only open. Oh, I understand. I understand. Right. I understand. But but and then at the middle school, we're averaging 11,000 books. And as I was saying, that's, that has actually managed to stay pretty consistent, even though three years ago the library started being closed at least a day and a half a week. Yeah. My, my my point being, it is much larger than than I would have would have thought. So. Um, and we also have study halls that come in. The teachers send kids from study halls. Eight That's periods, an activity about. period. We get kids during that. We have the, kids, the teachers who bring in the kids to do research, the schedule classes. Mm -hmm. And I think those numbers, too, would go up. I mean, how many years has it been since you had a book budget? Yeah, the middle school thing. has a lot no of this budget. Isn't you know, yeah. we, don't, we don't have these new bestsellers that these teenagers want to read. Or the next book in the series. Yeah. I mean, I still have middle school kids that come to me for books right. at Birdsboro because they can't get into the library at the middle school because of the hours there. Well, we do a lot of inter interlibrary loans. Right, yeah, I was right. going to say they, they do do a lot of interlibrary loans. Library loan figures for the high school. We borrow, they tend to borrow up in a library. The middle school borrows from the high school, the elementary right. borrows from the middle school. Right. And that's we, we, uh, in order to help the more advanced kids, we tend to borrow a lot from like college and the public libraries because our collection is the needs of the more and, and again, I, I'm I'm I fully understand the, the the budget, and obviously books are the first thing to get cut from budgets, um, and it's unfortunate. But uh, but we have, I mean, I think we've been doing our best to make it work for them. Well, and, 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 we, and we I'm find not the resources online and everything. So, I mean, you have seen some of the high school numbers decrease, but that's because we right. are going elsewhere for the material for them. Right. 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 But I, I would. You know, I, I'm again. My, my point is that, and again, I want to restate this: that currently, uh, you know, there, there, we have not, or are, right now, they're they're not they're, they're not looking to cut a librarian. Okay, you know, the budget hasn't been passed. You know, there there is a curtailment of a librarian in the budget, but it hasn't been passed, and they're not replacing the one from APC who re retired. So, I mean, that, that that's the point I'm trying to. To make here, so uh, we understand the importance of it, and we're just trying to get the 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 magnitude at which you know is done. I mean, what I was looking for also is we were trying to look at the number of students that actually were in the in the libraries on average, but we've got those. Yep. Yeah, I'm not going to. Yeah, right here. Um, it's about 140. I think for the high school. Right. And the middle school is lower because there's fewer study halls. Maybe 40, 45 yeah, but you're bringing you're bringing them in via classroom, though. Yeah, we also have the classes. Right. These are all the sign-in sheets. Right. There's about yeah, 40 the students a day at the middle school, yeah, and it might have been. And when classes come in, they don't sign in in those logs. So right. You wouldn't see those numbers. Yeah, and and she only had a, a few okay. of them. So okay. I believe the high school through April. So yeah. We're averaging 138 kids a day through the first through the beginning of March. Okay. But there would be much more students going to the middle school library, especially in the afternoon, on the afternoons that we don't have coverage, and that is where we're getting hit the hardest by um, students wanting access and and needing access. So, and and the other problem is they pull me to sub a lot as well. They'll pull me like sometimes for an entire day. So the, like right now we're closed every other day because one day I'm at the high school, one day I'm at the middle school. If I get to pull, if I'm I get pulled to that. sub a day, that means three entire days that the middle school library. Let, is let me ask you: When you're getting pulled to sub, you, are you 
teaching a class or are you just sitting there letting them do? No, I teach. Okay. I, no, every once in a while we'll do what's called class coverage and everybody does that, but there'll be the actual days where I sub for a teacher. I teach their lesson plans for the whole day. Meanwhile, I'm in their mm -hmm. classroom and the library is closed. Okay, well, we're just hearing about that and we're going to put that. I mean, because, I mean, push comes to shove, we should at least put somebody in there and give them the study all because we shouldn't be, we shouldn't let one part of our program suffer because of another, so. Okay. Again, and we don't hear about this until now, so. Yeah, I was not aware of that. No. I think it's difficult for us, too, because, I mean, I know personally, I emailed the board members about two, three weeks ago. And I didn't know if I was out of place by doing that. I think it's very, we're not really, we're not sure who we should go to about that stuff because, you know, it's your principal telling you, we need you to do this. And, you know, you don't want to go above them sometimes because that, that makes it a very uncomfortable work environment. Right. But coming to a board, I mean. I, I would ask them to, I, at minimal, I would ask you to talk to me yeah. to some degree, however you want to present it. If you want, if you don't want to put it in writing, if you'd rather just meet with me, I, I do have people that do periodically ask that. But I, I would, I would ask if you, for you to at least come to me and let me then decide what needs to be done with that. Because, quite honestly, had I known that our cover, our, that our middle school, high school librarian was covering, which we're doing with, you know, really 0.5 of a person who I've tried to make a whole just to, you know, get us through the rest of the year, I, I wouldn't have. I would have told the principals they, they were going to have to find Yeah, you, you should be else. using Ms. Torsha, yeah. Mrs. Torsha as more or less an ombudsman type of a person. Go to her, voice your concern. If if it warrants moving on, she'll tell you. Right. I'm going to have to take it up. To the next But if level, you just want to, you know, if you just want to, because the, the way the processes work is obviously you're building super, you're building principals, your, your direct line. Then it's, it's her and then Dr. Otto before it gets to us because I'll be honest with you, we probably all read your email, but there's not a lot we can do about it. Be, you know, we're made aware of it, but we can't do anything about it, okay? We all read another email, responded to it, but, you know, again, the proper process is through the superintendent of the district. Absolutely. Yeah. But it seems like, and, and I, maybe I feel more targeted because I am the lowest in the library department. I feel like for four years, the library program is always one of the first things that gets discussed about, well, we can maybe look at eliminating. And because I'm not a district resident, I don't feel like my voice is heard. Mm -hmm. So that's why I felt, you know, after four years, I felt like I need to get this out. I need you to know what I do. Right. And that's why, and, you know, and, I, and I did say, and Connor said he didn't think it was it was inappropriate no. for me to, to fill you in no. on these are my duties, this is how it relates to, you know, the Pennsylvania Library right. guidelines and... That's why I felt like I just needed you to know, to be aware, before you sit and talk about possibly a living. And, and honest, honestly, if if you look at it three years ago, we were getting rid of the entire guidance department at the high school. <laughs> and obviously that didn't happen. I mean, ideas are going to come up, okay? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, you know, and, and they're going to float ideas. Uh, the, the, the unfortunate problem is you've got a pot of money over here, a pot of bills over here, and the only way to bridge the two gaps is two levers, right? It's programs and taxes. And there's going to be a whole bunch of people over here say, don't raise our taxes, we're going to lose our houses. And there are a whole bunch of people over here saying, let's not cut our program, raise our taxes. And we've got to come up with a, a happy median somewhere in between to, to do it. Uh, and that's what we're trying to do. We're, we're trying to run, we're trying to keep the program in place as best we can and, and do it, you know, fiscally res you know, responsible. So. A few other things that um, did come out in my conversations with the librarians is how much time they do spend with students in, in teaching them researching skills, um, even how to write, how to you know put together a, a paper and, and to make sure that it's following certain requirements. And students are, aren't really able to access that one-on-one -on -one help sometimes from their own teacher because there's a class of you know 25 there. So they'll seek out the librarian. And, and I know at the middle level, it, they've really been used. And at the elementary level, I've also often seen the kids coming in and doing their research and, you know, that librarian being there and saying, okay, what are you doing and, and you know, working over top of them. So they're, they are doing a, a very integral part of, of teaching study skills and, and how to, to, to do research and, you know, how to prepare yourself. So 
um, I think that doesn't come out, you know, in, in every day without somebody speaking to it and somebody observing it. So um, for that, you know, the numbers of hours can't even be added up for, for how many times, minutes, mm -hmm. et cetera, that you're doing that. Um, at the elementary level, twice a year, they are all coordinating um, book fairs to try to make sure that, you know, fresh new materials are being put in front of children. Some have more help than others. Some people are doing it all by themselves and, um, you know, <laughs> recruiting family members to come in and help because they don't, you know, have quite the same support as the other schools. But that is so huge. And that, you know, that is their money maker. That's how they buy their books. So that, that's their budget. And the more money they make out of the book fair, the more money they can put back into their own library without having to dig into the, the, um, the budget. Mm -hmm. So, and those are time consuming because they last seven days. Um, and that doesn't re include the setup or the breakdown or the amount of time in the evenings that, you know, people are, are there. So those are two big things. And I don't know, does the middle school do a book fair? They we do. I do it on my own. Okay. With the rotating librarians. We, we do it ourselves because there are no parent volunteers right. at the middle school. And like I said, that is the only, I have a zero book budget and a zero magazine budget. So this year... The only new books in the middle school are the ones I get from the book fair, which is kind of a shame because, especially with Common Core coming, right. I'm not always purchasing what I think is best for the library. I can only purchase books that I can get with my scholastic money. And, um, but yeah, we, we kind of do it on our own, and that's where we do it. Oh, the magazines. I had zero money for magazines, so what I had to do was the, um, actually, uh, the guidance counselor helped me. She was doing the... Um, Oh, the, the yeah. Red Nurse yeah. Tapes? Me, oh. you could. Right. What we do is they do a fundraiser, a magazine subscription okay. fundraiser, and we use some of that money to buy magazines for the library. I put a sticker saying it's been provided for by the students at the middle school, right. or else we'd have no periodicals as well. And magazines are huge because some of your lower readers mm -hmm. won't go for, for bigger print. They're going to go for magazines because it's of interest, so mm -hmm. um, important. Yeah, so we're, we're doing what we can with like zero budget. The other thing I did want to mention too, that one of the middle school teachers asked me to bring up was uh, differentiated instruction. I used to get a lot of the, the teacher would stay with the bulk of the class and I would get some of the higher level kids and we'd work on projects, especially like in eighth grade with the Renaissance Fair and things. And since I'm not there, that's yeah. all gone by the wayside. And quite a few middle school uh, teachers haven't been able to do their projects this year because there's just nobody there to help those kids. And many of the elementary librarians are also used as um, a resource for helping to, you know, continue to work on skills where there's time within their schedule. Well, and that hits upon one of the... Th That's the an entire role, Encore group. The third role, which is collaboration. Mm -hmm. And I think, I know that I collaborate with the technology teacher. You know, I do the research, and then she does the synthesis, so we collaborate very well together. Um, I collaborate somewhat with the classroom teachers, but not nearly as much as I could. Um, I see the gym teacher in your, your library all the time. Oh, You're yeah, always collaborating. collaborating. <laughs> but but um, ideally, I mean, in a perfect world, I would meet with the classroom teachers. They would bring their class to me with them there, right. that I would instruct as well as assist. So, so having like a flex schedule where they could come down. That way what they're learning is not in isolation. That they're getting the, that they're being able to pull the strings together. I think we do that a lot with um, trying to meet what we do in the library with what is going on in the classroom. Right. So when I read a book and I say, oh, you know, we're going to be talking about personification. Oh, we just did that in class. It is reinforcing that what they're learning in class is not just happening in class. Right. So we we make connections all the time. Are 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 there any administrative functions that you're currently doing that probably should not be? Oh my goodness, yes. If I had an aide, I would not be doing a lot of them. Is that what you mean? Principal duties, right? No, I'm talking about secretarial duties. Oh, those aren't secretarial. Other than subbing. No, other than sub, that's, I'm, I'm looking along those lines. I mean, like before, I mean, she was doing Scantron, and that's not, you know, so I'm looking along those lines just to make sure that you're not being burdened. I mean, we have, like, interventions. Oh. We take, like, the lower kids. Um, we take, I have the higher kindergarten kids in a group, usually about 20, 23, 24. I see them twice a week for an enrichment. Um, I mean, I do lunch duty, I do bus duty, I do crossing duty. I mean, there's, there's extra. And that's I don't see not that the same. As, 
in all of the buildings. Okay. That they're, they're, what Kelly, or what, um, I'm sorry, Rachel, Rachel. is doing, um, and I can speak to the years that I was at AIC. This changed, though. Okay. I mean, I've done second grade math for the lower kids. Right. Over, and this is just over, like, you know, the last two, three years. I've worked with anywhere from K, K to 2 is usually where I stuck to, because I was like, don't give me anything higher. Are, are you? But, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've and seen and I think all all encore art music and we all do that encore. Yeah. And the subbing. In Minoxian Bird. And the subbing as well, yes. And but yeah, we have to address that subbing. Right. I mean, there may not be a, a readily solution yeah, for it. Am. But again, it's like like anything else. I mean we, we we I don't know how you can sub if you're expected to we've had we've had cancel we've had, cancel, we've had our specials cancel. canceled. Yeah. And sent to South. Okay, I got to ask the question though. If if the teachers' prep period is supposed to be when you're when they're in the specials, when do they get the prep? You would period? have to ask the teachers that. I'm I'm not. And it's been left, and it's up to us to inform them as well. Okay, that's got to stop. Mm -hmm. So they do keep them. I mean, it, it is just okay. it has happened in again, the last week. Again, so. we weren't aware of that, and then we're gonna we're gonna have to have that addressed. Okay. okay? Um, I, it's something else that I did when I was at AIC is that um, children that were having difficulty at recess, um, that they, they didn't want to go out or they didn't want to you know participate in things, but they loved going to the library. Mm -hmm. Mrs. Wentzel, and I, I'm, I, I would hope that it was going on in other buildings, that she would embrace that student during that you know 15 minute recess time and have them in the library with her, you know, helping her shelf books, learning how to, you know, bring, um, to, to, to check the books in and um, even just let them, you know, just embrace the library. So it was a nice quiet time. So, you know, oftentimes you might be asked to do that, but it's incorporating the library into their, to what they're doing. So thank you. All right. Anything else that you no, can, I mean, again, anything I, else I, that you I, feel I, like we didn't touch on? The, the reason that, again, I'm going to reiterate, the reason that I asked to this, have this done, and, and, mm -hmm. and I want to go back and I want to still give, give credit where it's due, with Mr. Martino, is we need to know. Right. I mean, we need to know what is being done. We need to know the duties because, you know, a lot of us are under the, the misconception that, you know, a librarian stands there and flips the book back and starts back March 31st and hands the book out, okay? Sometimes I mean, I, I, hate, I hate to say it, but that, that's, that's the vision you get. And, you know, the guidance counselor is the same thing. We have a misconception of what a guidance counselor is. So unless we have an idea of what you do and, again, what you shouldn't be doing, we can't take those things off your plate to allow you to, to you know, continue doing what you're supposed to be doing, so. Okay. Okay. Oh, oh, there's I, a hand. Hand. All right. I just want to ask something because I know that it's always, you know, well, maybe you shouldn't be doing this, but the more that the board is cutting things back and cutting things back, we're running out of ample bodies to do some of those things. Okay. So, yes, it's unfortunate that a librarian is doing that. I work in the middle school. I hate that my librarian is not there. I'm a language arts teacher. Mm -hmm. I want to be able to go get books. However, if you look around and you're like, well, this person's busy doing this, and this person's busy doing this, yet it was okay to cut the library program to two days a week. It sends the message that it's okay then maybe to use them as a suck, mm -hmm. or maybe it's okay to use them in as another area. And then you wonder why we don't want to come and talk to you, because what message did you just send? It's but, okay to be there every other day. But, but can I just, again, I mean, I'm not, I'm, not, I'm not trying to get argumentative here, but let me ask you a question. If, if, if you've been, I guess I've been doing this for eight years now. You get a budget from the, you get a budget. They run the budget up, and you got to know the process. The budget gets run up from the buildings and the individual departments, and we get a number. And then we go to the other side of the table, and you say, okay, how much taxes are going to be raised this year based upon the house values and the, the, the rate we're allowed to charge, and you come up with a number. And then the governor says you're going to get this much money from from the state and the shortfall of that number is what you have to raise taxes by and you have a limit now the state says you have a limit you can raise taxes by and when you do all the income on this side and all the revenue and all the expenses on this side and you're still short a gap you can't you got to balance the, we're not the city of philadelphia that can run a deficit we're not the federal government that can run a deficit the state says you got to balance a budget and I understand that. it's just i feel like 
and I am I live here, my son goes here, and I teach here. So mm -hmm. I understand both sides of it, and I don't know how to fix the budget problem. Right. But I do know that sitting in the seat that I'm sitting in, stepping on both sides of that, like, ooh, the taxes may go up, oh, how am I going to you know, afford to do this? And then here at the same time, well, we're going to cut some more of the basic programs, or we're going to do this, or you know what I mean? Like, we're going to do a little bit more of this. I, we all care about the kids. So a librarian, even though it's not their job, is going to be mm -hmm. like, you know what? I will help with the basic skills, because they're our kids. Right. So it just seems like a very, I don't want to say hypocritical. However, there's a little bit there where I'm like, what? What are you? What do you, like, where are we going? What do you want? Because I don't know anymore, and I'm starting to spin. And, and, and you know what? And, and so are we, and we don't know either. I'm, I'm going to say, let's forget we, me, personally, okay? If you follow what I've done for eight years I've been on the board, and you've spoken to teachers that know me, okay, I'm not a let's just cut things for the sake of cutting things. I'm not just, but when you have, and, when the, and again, i got to go back, and, I, and I'm going to blame this on Harrisburg, okay? That's where our problem is right now. When, and I'm going to rough numbers here, four years ago when we got our budget numbers from Harrisburg, they gave us a pool of money. The next year, they gave us a pool of money and a little bit more money. And then the year after that, they gave us a pool and a little more money. And then finally, three years ago, they gave us a lesser pool of money. And what we found out was our, our, our governor was using stimulus funds to bridge his gap, his budget. Well, and Mr. Martino's asked me this before. When the state gives you money, you can't give it back. You've got to spend it. The state doesn't give you the option, because we asked, can we send money back? And they said, no, you got to spend it. So you spend it on things like programs and buildings and, and whatever else you want to talk about. And then all of a sudden, you now have a budget that has a built-in sink of money. And if you look at, unfortunately, we don't have a product we can sell. Okay, Our product is education. And based on that, our largest sunk cost is our salaries. Okay, we can't increase production. We can't develop a new product to go out and sell. We can't have a price increase to, to do the to, to do the gap. It's it's education. So we in the past we were raising taxes. We go up a mill. We go up a mill and a quarter. But what happened then is the state said, well, not only are, are we're going to have what's known as an Act One index meaning you can only raise your taxes up to a specific level. And, and you can't go beyond that without going out to a referendum, where well, they didn't have that prior to that point. So there were times that we'd raise taxes by a mill. I think we can go up to like 0.6 mills this year at the most, or yeah, 0.6 mills without going back out. The year before that, it was even less. Next year, it's going to be less. The index is going down and down and down on us. And there's stuff out there, there are bills out there. There's this Bill 1776, the property tax elimination, that's sitting in Harrisburg and will not come out of committee for a vote. That is what is supposed that is what is supposed to save the property tax. That is supposed to be what is supposed to help save public education in Pennsylvania, and it's not being allowed to vote on. If you talk to school districts, uh, Roberts, Spring Ford, Perky Omen Valley, Upper Perk, they're all in the same boat we're in. Okay. Well, again. I just think at the end of the day, like, we're all here. We all want to do the same thing. So how can we scrape together without getting rid of anybody else and utilize each warm body for the benefit of all mm -hmm. of our kids? And at the end of the day, if the taxes go up, because there were years that they didn't. I right. Mean, I live here, I know it. I was also one of those people that went back and redid my taxes because my house was a new house, so I went back and dropped it down. And I know there were others that did it, but there has to be some sort of happy medium where we're either going all the way to one extreme or we're going all the way to another. And that's where my frustration is as a taxpayer, teacher, and parent. Like, mm -hmm. there is no medium. We're either all the way over here or we're all the way over here, and there's nothing that seems to be right here. That just seems to even make any sense. So. Mr. Shaheen, are we yeah. going to be talking about block scheduling at all? No, that okay. block scheduling is going to be the first meeting in September when when they get a chance to actually put the schedule for together for the fall and then do the block scheduling as part of of, of that afterwards. Okay. 
Okay, I was just wondering if there's a timetable on that. But you're saying September is when they're looking at getting that underway, figuring stuff out? Correct. Okay. They have to get the current schedule in place first, and then they'll be able to then go and, and, and dummy up a block schedule this summer for us to look at the fall. Okay, because it's my understanding they have that information now as to what classes students will be taking because they already registered for that. All the classes are going to take next year. Well, they have the register. They have this class. They have what students want to take. They don't necessarily have a schedule uh, as far as you're going to take algebra one first period uh, and gym second period. That isn't done. They know they have the number of head counts per 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 subject, but not blanked out as far as period to the day and everything else. Okay. I now, okay. Thank you. So, yes. Building off of what she's saying about how we all pick up the slack because there's nobody to do. I mean, I'm an encore teacher too. I teach music, but I teach reading. I teach math, and I saw mm -hmm. and you organize all kinds of special events. You're looking at cutting back all of us, probably losing one person per department, and then demoting everybody else. So, if we're not around to do all those things that nobody else has the time to do and the elementary teachers are then down to a 25-minute prep period, then there's nobody to do those things. So who do you propose to do everything that we're already picking up? Well, again, we're going to get into it, something that I, I really don't want to go here right now. Give me $1.9 million to bridge that gap in the budget, right. and that goes away. Okay, that's the problem, okay? I mean, honestly, that's the problem we have. And I don't mean to be cold. I don't mean to, to be... When we put the budget, there was a $5 million gap, and we whittled it down, we whittled it down, and there's still a 1.6, 1.7. It's a big number, okay? And next year, it's going to be another big number. It's, it's not, it's property taxes, and, and you know, and we can go into this, and I prefer really didn't, but it, it's, 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 it's PEASERS, it's health care. It's nothing you guys have any effect on or control on, okay? You didn't have any say in the fact that the state mismanaged your retirement fund, and it, it, you didn't have a say in the fact that health care has just gone ballistic, okay, with the Obama health care plan, where all this stuff has to be done, so health care costs went crazy. It happened. It, 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 it's, a it's a necessary evil. But because of that, we, it has to be absorbed, and it has to be paid for somehow, and, and that's, that's where we are. That, that's, I mean, that's the ugly, the ugly reality of the whole thing. Okay. So, I mean, I'm, I'm not going to get out the door. <laughs> Do we have a, a timeline? I mean, uh, for voting. I mean, there's a lot of us, especially the encore teachers, and okay. I don't need to keep coming back to this. Right. But I mean, I personally was already told by an administrator that I'm not going to have a job next year. Well, then you were incorrectly and informed on that. A lot of that. us have been told, you know, okay, the most you're going to be is 80 percent. And okay. this has been going on for like four let, let me let me let me give you let me give you the timeline and, and Mr. Kurtz, correct me if I'm incorrect on this, but I, I we sat down. Two things are currently going simultaneously, okay? We're meeting with Mrs. Hicks and and and, and uh, Austin Peters on an ongoing continual basis. We met earlier, we're gonna we're keep going, we we're, we're talking with them, okay? Simultaneously on the other side. There are, there are what they call curtailments that need to be voted on by the board, okay? That is going to be done on the 13th. That's on the agenda to be talked about. On the 20th, they're voted on. All that, and those are the, the curtailments we, you talk, we talked about earlier with the encores and all that. That just means we're going to notify the state that we're going to potentially do these things, Okay. What? Do we have to? I thought we didn't have to. No, you have to notify the state. We don't have to ask for permission. Permission. Okay. okay we have to notify them we're doing that. The they actually do not kick in until the budget is voted on in June. Okay. That's why we are meeting continually, and we you know and we're tr all the time. Four years. Okay. I I don't know I don't know what else to tell you. We're 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 working. I mean I mean. We're, we're, we, we sat down tonight for an hour. We're going to try to meet next Monday, potentially. We're meeting Mondays. Any days we can meet, we're getting together. Okay? And, and so, I mean, those things are continually going. We, we just, it was just an hour earlier, just before so I came down here. So, in the timeline, then, you're saying by May 20th, you'll have a better idea of, I mean, I know the budget isn't approved until June, but 
you're going to vote on these things by the 20th? Well, they got to be voted on by the 20th, okay? So, yeah, the, the, the odds are they're probably going to get voted on by the 20th. Just to let the state notify doesn't mean they have to be put in place. doesn't mean we have to exercise them or pull that lever. But they have to be voted on to give the state time or to give, actually give notice and everybody else that needs to go on with, with what's going on here. But we're continually working the negotiation process. I mean, I, I mean, again, I mean, it, we, we're doing it. I mean, it, you know. I hesitate to say anything because I don't want the. Yeah. The, but we're working it. <laughs> yeah, I, I don't want to put any. Things are very nebulous right now. Um, talks have completely stalled to no thought. I, I, mean, I don't want to throw you under the bus. No. Um, um, talks have completely stalled because our offer was viewed as, you know, not sufficient. Um, and at that point, talks have completely stalled. And um, now I'm glad to say that the board really is working, trying to work with well, us. Well, the committee, the committee came back and said, we don't want to stall. Let's get, keep these going. we got to keep it going. And, you know, I did this two years ago you know, where, it, you know, 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday, we're upstairs working with, 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 with Brad and Austin to get the – so I mean, we're going to work right up until the last day and the last minute to, to do this. Um, I, I think their frustration is uh, it, it's been a four month wait of uh, no information. You know, really, I can't give anything, you can't really give anything. And to, to have a precarious feeling like that for so long yeah. is unbearable. Mm -hmm. And it's unconscionable for them to have to sit with this weight on their shoulders for such a long time. Um, but just because there's silence, mm -hmm. it's just because the nature of negotiations. You know, if, if we go public with things, it can make it fall apart completely yeah. as well. I mean, there's things that we can't, we, we just and we can't. I mean, I, I know you're in a tough, I mean, I, I don't envy you at all, believe me. Um, but, I mean, there's things that, that we, we talk about upstairs that they then have to take back to their committee, that we have to take back to the board, and then we, you know, so, I mean, we were that far apart, and we're, we're, we're trying to get there. And it takes a while. It's, it, you know, it's, it takes a while. And honestly... Well, I think also, just speaking as a community member, I feel like sometimes you're lying. Yes. No offense to you, because I don't no. know you personally, but I feel like the whole, like, oh, well, we can't say yet, because legally, whatever, we're closing ABC, yet I go to the fancy dance with my son, and I'm like, really? Because there's boxes all over the place with signs all over it, so if you're not closing... Then well, you know what? I, I'm, I'm, I'm going to stop you there. Attend the meeting. The meeting said with the, 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 the attorney, we cannot... Legally, I just said that. You do can't that. legally say right. it. I get that. But as a community member, I'm like, <laughs> I know you. I know as a teacher you can't legally say right. that. Right. As a community member, though, I, I look at you and think. You know the direct. You know the literally. direction it's going in. I can just say that. I mean, it, 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 but legally you can't say it. I can't say that we're going to close ABC that. right now. You have to see how right. the people in the community look at it. Like right. Little fix. Right. So if that's a little fib there, and there's a little fib here, you put that all together, it might be, make one big fib, no. and we're like, I can't legally say this, I can't legally say that, I get that, sitting in my shoes, but there are things that then you have to start to think, like, okay, well... Mm. You know what, then I would tell them, run for a board seat, there's one open in Amity Township. Maybe I should. I've done, you can't, you work for the school district. <laughs> you got to quit your job. <laughs> I mean, in all honesty, I mean, until you actually sit on this side of the table and I do it. I understand that. I wouldn't yeah. like your job. I'm just saying that it's yeah. that's where they're starting to get. Uh, I agree. Do you know what I mean? That's where it's starting yep. to get a little bit where we're like, or we're not saying that we're going to do this, but we're going we're gonna to put it into the state just in case. Okay, well, maybe that's a little bit too. Well, again, if nothing happens, it's in the budget to be done. I mean, it, we, we, we've been very clear on that. But we have until the end of June to try to prevent it from happening. Okay. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Jean, I have a quick question. Uh, now yeah, we're going to do that. 